Hello, welcome to step number three of the Cheat Engine tutorial game video series. In the previous two, we created two scripts, one that gives us infinite ammo for step one, one that makes us immediately kill enemies in the second one without taking any damage ourselves. And in this one here, we need to jump onto all these platforms and then run over to the door and get into the door without getting hit. It seems fairly easy at first. I mean, you can make all these jumps without you can make all the jumps without getting hit. But the problem is, as soon as you light all these platforms up, so when you jump on them all, uh, I'll actually, so when you jump on them, they turn green. As soon as every platform is green, these three enemies will teleport over here or fly there extremely quick and block the door. So there's no way you can touch it. Something you could do is find the enemy X, Y coordinates and just move them, but that's not really that fun. It's not exciting. There's nothing new to that. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to turn off our collision with the enemies so we can walk right through the enemies, but we can still jump on the platforms and walk through the door and everything normal. So this one here, you can see we have no known values. It doesn't show us anything like that we have a health or anything at all. So we're going to have to find a value of our player. Let's do our X coordinate because left and right is easy to move. So in almost every game, your X, Y coordinates are floats because you can be 0 0.000001 steps over and it wants to keep track of it exactly, not just kind of roughly where you are because you just teleport around a bunch. So right now we don't know our, our X coordinate. We're going to move over to the right a little bit, and then we're going to, using the hotkeys I set up to make this way faster, we're going to just quickly search for an increased value, move over, search for a decreased value, and we'll search for an unchanged value a couple times, move up, search for an increased value again, maybe pause the game, search for a unchanged value. You can see we're already, already down to two, so that was perfect. So one of them's changing on its own. That's not going to be it. And when we move, that other one changes. So this here is most likely our X coordinate. We can check that by hitting space to freeze the value and moving. And you can see Cheat Engine just keeps writing that value back, and we can't really move anywhere. So we know we have our true X coordinate. Now what we want to do is we can just browse this memory region and there it is down there. So let's start by searching for another float because we need to find our, well, we don't need to, but we'll want to find our Y value too. So the value that changes when we jump, which if that's our X, that one looks like it's our Y. We can add that to the list and that would be, we'll just call it y, call that one x, oops, there we go. So there's our player, we can move around, we can jump, and now we need to see what happens if we get hit. So we need to find something to modify, we don't have a health value that's visible, so we just need to find something that changes when we get hit, so we can start looking from there. So it doesn't look like anything. Oh, right. Let's want to change to a we go four byte decimal. And you can see there's our X and Y, those same addresses interpreted as decimal now. And now we want to look for something that changes. So you can see all of these changed and that one changed. And looking at them, like these values here seem fairly random what they changed to. But that one and that one are both flags of some sort. So let's start by looking at those. We'll add that one. I think it was this one here. Yeah. So we'll add that to our list and add that to our list. So they're both zero when we're alive. Let's freeze them. Okay, so it's doing something. We're going invisible and then flashing visible as soon as Cheat Engine changes it back to a zero. That's not what we want, right? That's kind of an ugly way to stay alive it would be the same as freezing your health in some games that might work in most games as soon as you hit zero you would die and start to respawn so this it's like a poor man's 
god mode. We don't want that. So let's figure out individually what each of these does. So I'll freeze one of them. Run into an enemy. Okay. Okay. So I'm still visible, but I still teleport back. So this is probably something like player invisible. So right now we're not invisible. Now we are. And let's just try changing that to one. Yeah, as soon as we change it, we're invisible, but we can still move around. So pretty spot on, I think. So this one here is, well, let's change it to a one and see what happens. Oh, the game immediately resets. So this is probably a player dead. So if we just lock that to zero, yeah, we can run around. We go invisible because that instruction only changes on the rounds reset. Or sorry, this value, player invisible, only changes on the reset. But we're constantly telling the game, no, we're not actually dead. Again, definitely not what we want. So let's wait for a reset. Uh, this instruction, we won't really play around with much. But this one here, because we don't want this to get changed at all, we want to find out what writes this address. Get hit. And that's so when we take damage, it moves one into that value, changes us to dead, and we're dead. So show this. What you can do is you can just knop this instruction. That was obviously the wrong one. Okay, let's place that. Let's die quickly. Oh, right, because we're still set to invisible. So we could knop this instruction and then also knop the one that makes us invisible. We'd still get all the particle effects flying around, which we don't want. It, it's ugly. It's, again, not really a no collision. So what we can do is you can right click on this and you can actually break and trace. What this will do is as soon as this instructions hit, it'll start to trace every instruction that gets called after. And we can use that to go back functions to see where this is called from and where that was called from and work our way back down the call stack. So we want to step over instead of single step because we don't care about functions that are called after we get hit. And then you can hit OK here. This nice window shows up and as soon as that instruction instruction gets called, you can see it starts flashing around. Uh, expand all. So you can see we didn't go back anymore, so we're all still within the same function, so that's not going to help us much. But if we break and trace again and go for 10 times that instruction count, so that went down a thousand instructions or a thousand bytes, one of the two. So let's change that to 10,000 and do the same thing again. The game will lock up for quite a bit of time here as it follows through every single instruction because it does grab all the registers and everything at each of those instructions. So let's just hang on for a minute. And it's still doing its thing. So 10,000 might have been a bit overkill, but you can see we got a couple extra calls and we'll expand them all. And this is where we were, that's where we got hit. So if we go all the way down or close that, we can double click there. And then this is the call. So when we took damage, this is the call that was actually taken. And if you move around it a bit, you can see there's a jump. So let's see what happens if instead of jumping if equal, so ALAL0, probably something to do with collision test, uh, we would just want to jump. No matter what, always jump. And let's remember we're changing that to a JE, so jump if equal. So now it'll always jump over this call here. We'll never hit it. And if we run through enemies, cool, we don't get hit. We can still touch platforms. Okay, so that looks pretty good to me. It looks like it's doing what we want. Let's run through. Yeah, still can't get hit. Jump through. Touch all the platforms. And 
hit. Yeah, still not getting hit. So that's good. Let's change that back to JE because we're just like the previous two, we want to create a actual script that will modify that for us. So we're not searching for all these values every time. So let's go tools, auto assemble, AOB injection. And we just want to change that when it's activated. We just want to change to a jump. So it'll always jump over the call for collision. Uh, nope, we don't want to do that. We actually want to assign to the cheat table. We don't need that anymore. This one here is step three, no collision. Uh, if you're having a hard time doing these jumps, some of them are a little bit tricky. You can just change your Y value and teleport up to the top. So as you jump up, it gets lower and the lower down you are, it gets higher. So if you change that to like a zero, make it almost there, just go to negative one. And then it's pretty easy just to jump through all these platforms. And with our hack turned off, touch the enemies, immediately we die. Let's turn our hack back on. We can run through, not take any damage. And we'll quickly run through this again. So that jump there kind of sucks. Let's just go change our Y to negative one. And one thing you have probably noticed by now is every time we activate a script, at the very top it tells us there's an integrity check error, which means the game is able to actually tell that we're modifying it, which in a single player game like this usually doesn't matter, but it's like bypass. So we need to figure out what's going on with that. We'll bypass the anti-cheat that's built into this game just so that it can't tell that we're cheating. And that worked, and we will do that in the next video. When you're done with all these scripts here, you want to make sure you just delete all these dead values. Then you want to save your script. Uh, yeah, let's call it that. That way, close cheat engine, you can reopen this and still have all these scripts without having to rewrite them. So yeah, in the next video, we will bypass the cheat detection in the built-in game tutorial.